Larry Sabato runs one of run, runs one for the University of Virginia. He's the director there of the Center for Politics, a longtime fan here in the presidential race. What are you watching for tonight, Larry? Uh, first of all, thank you, Shep. And actually, I think we could use a couple of martinis. <laughs> that would work better than a crystal yeah, ball. Please. Uh, look, I'm I, after 2016. I, I listened to what Jim Cramer said. I don't want to get too far ahead of the votes. That's one thing we learned, and it's an important lesson. I'm looking at each of these states individually, the swing states, because they're a universe unto themselves. We have an electoral college system that means the national popular vote means nothing. That means there isn't a direct relationship from state to state. Take Florida. I've thought for a long time the Biden campaign was being overly optimistic about Florida. I know it hasn't been declared. Uh, he can still win it potentially. But looking at the pattern of votes that I've seen so far, as in Miami-Dade, where Biden is winning but by nearly not enough, uh, I think the Biden people will be very, very lucky to, to capture Florida. Mm. Probably that would edge to Trump. That doesn't mean anything, though, in relation to Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, Texas, uh, certainly Pennsylvania, Michigan, and, and uh, uh, Wisconsin. Sure. Those are the states that we have to be focused on. Let's talk about a couple of those that have already closed. If you're a Democrat, you're looking at Atlanta and about nine counties that surround it. And if you can get your turnout big enough there, you have a chance in Georgia. What are you seeing in turnout there? The turnout has been remarkably favorable for Democrats. They almost won the governorship in 2018. Just a fraction of, of a percent kept them away from it. Uh, and the momentum has continued to build. There's a lot of anger left over from 2018. So Democrats have a real shot there. I still think it would be a mild upset if they carry Georgia. But they're in the hunt. North Carolina. If you're on the Democratic side, you're looking for the research triangle and the area around Charlotte. And you need high African-American turnout. What are we seeing inside the numbers so far in, in North Carolina? What I've seen, Chef, is some places are, in fact, generating a high African-American turnout, high minority turnout. Other places, at least from the scattered precincts I've seen, not so much. And that's, that's the crazy thing about elections. We expect a uniform pattern, but the more you look at it, the more you realize rarely is it uniform. So we'll be here a long time once they finally start reporting the vote. If I'm sitting at home right now wondering what's about to happen with my money, and we realize what's happened all along the East Coast, what state is Larry Sabato watching for the one that might be the one that pushes one side or the other over. Oh, I would love to say Pennsylvania, but as everybody has reported, uh, it takes a long time in Pennsylvania to get the vote. So I would, I would tend to look at Michigan and Wisconsin. If those two states flip from Trump to Biden, then I think the onus is on Trump to, to make up ground. And that may be difficult for him to do. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.